so great to see you too. Thanks for meeting up with us. How's your day been? Oh, really great. And where are you coming from and going to? I just got back from Singapore and heading to Iceland next week for a vacation. Well, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to meet with us. We've got quite a few questions for you. And the first one, Paris or New York? Well, New York for bagels, Paris for croissants. And if life was a hashtag, what would yours be? Hashtag getting it done. you the most when you became the president of the International Court of Arbitration? Maybe not so much surprised, but I am just so impressed. Every time I chair the court sessions and see this incredible dedication of the court members focused on the details and really assuring that the work we do is of the highest quality, that the awards are indeed enforceable and the parties are getting what they paid for. And what led to you giving your now famous Maslow's Hammer speech? Oh, well, you know, Maslow's Hammer, you know, is short form for uh, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. It really encapsulates a sense of uh, tool bias or skill bias. And what I really want to emphasize is that as lawyers, we have to solve our clients' problems. So at the ICC court and our dispute resolution services, we really want to assure that we are providing a suite of services and that lawyers and arbitrators are thinking about all of the tools in their toolbox. And how many countries have you visited this year? Oh, well, physically, I've been in 14 countries, even with large segments when we couldn't travel because of the pandemic. But virtually, I have been connecting with in-house counsel practitioners and uh, arbitrators from all over the world. And how do you measure your success as the ICC president? Well, at the core, it is really assuring that the work of the court is done at the highest level, that we are reviewing awards and assuring that the parties get you know, what they pay for an enforceable award. And what are your goals for the ICC for the next year and beyond? So our vision is that we are a one-stop shop for companies dispute resolution and dispute prevention needs wherever they are in the world and what inspired your client mindset for the icc court i really come to this role after more than 25 years as outside counsel having to think about you know my clients um, strategic needs, str strategic objectives, and how I was able to meet those needs. And so I'm really bringing that perspective into this role as we think about what we need to do to meet the party's needs with, who are in essence our clients. And what does the new ICC logo and branding mean to you? Oh, I just love it. It really communicates dynamism, modernity, and really a sense that we are going forward and we are innovative. And how about diversity, equity, and inclusion? What does that mean for the ICC court? Well, diversity is our strength. There are court members from over 120 different countries. And so in order to assure that we really have the benefit of that diversity, we have to ensure that the environment is inclusive and everybody can bring their authentic self to everything we do. And are there any upcoming projects or initiatives that you're especially excited about? Well, I am really excited about our centenary, which is in 2023. We will celebrate 100 years of the ICC court. And so we will have a year, not just of 
celebration, but a year of initiatives. And what's one myth about ICC arbitration that you wish everyone knew the truth of? That we are not more expensive than other arbitral institutions, that there is really a value proposition to ICC arbitration. What advice do you have for young professionals interested in an arbitration career? Maybe two key things. The first is be curious. Always think about the role of the work you're doing in the broader context. And the second is position yourself to be lucky. There is certainly an element of luck in an arbitration career, but you have to position yourself to benefit from that luck. And finally, the big one. What has been the most rewarding part of your first year as president of the ICC International Court of Arbitration? It is really connecting and meeting so many people around the world and getting the opportunity to work with them.